Anybody ever ride the bowl with a, with a liquid death before? <laughs> Don't show that to your kids. What's up, cupcakes? It is January, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys got lasers for Christmas. You know why I know? Because my DMs have been blowing up with, Nick, how do I put this laser together? Nick, what am I doing wrong? Nick, help! So what I figured I'd do is put together a very simple video showing you how to get your Xtool D1 Pro up and running and connected to Lightburn. Let's do this. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to Xtool's website. These guys couldn't have made this easier to take care of. Come in, we're gonna go to software. You're gonna choose the software for your machine. We're using a Windows machine, so we're gonna choose Windows. We'll let that download. And once that's downloaded, we're gonna go ahead and open it up. Okay, and once you're in XCS or Xtool Creative Space, you're gonna go ahead and connect your device. So I'm gonna click here and it's gonna say there's no devices available because my machine isn't on. Go ahead and turn it on right now, refresh. And there it is, click it. And now you're gonna see your laser connected up in the upper right hand corner. The next thing you wanna do is come in here, click this guy and check for updates. And we just wanna confirm that this is the most current firmware version. I'm gonna close this. Now my firmware is already upgraded, but normally when you're doing this, it's you're gonna to have to upgrade it. It's gonna to refer to a switch when it's prompting you through. I'm gonna show you where that switch is right now so there's no confusion. Okay, to give you an idea of orientation, this is your Wi-Fi antenna. This is the go button. Mine has a cover on it. And what you're looking for is this switch right here. It's a tiny little black switch next to this white little box. And when you're updating, it's gonna tell you to flip the switch to the left or the, the left-hand side of the machine. So we're gonna flip that now. Now you're going to proceed with your firmware update and after your firmware has been updated, move this switch back to the right or back over towards the go button. What that does is that keeps extraneous code from being transferred from your computer to your laser. Not having the switch oriented in the proper direction cause things like your laser stopping midway through a car or the laser just kind of wandering off by its own or the laser losing its ability to travel on the Y or X axis. Very important to have that switch pushed to the right when you're facing machine. All right, let's take a quick tour of my laser because it does have some upgrades that you're not gonna see with your Xtool D1 Pro. I received the majority of these upgrades from Daniel at Alive Pixel Creations. So some of the things he provides are custom made fan covers. This is a Z-axis extender. It allows me to move the laser head up and down further than the, the actual machine will allow. So you can keep the legs on all the time. Speaking of the legs, he also designed these spacers that hold your honeycomb up off your surface and orient it to the legs. So allows you to use other things like this ruler, which allows you to keep things at a 90 degree angle. And just because I get asked about this all the time, this little guy right here is just a button cover that I got from Amazon. It covers the go button, uh, just so you don't accidentally bump it. I will link that along with Daniel's website. If you use this code on the screen, you're good for 15% off anything regular price in a store. Xtool Creative Space continues to grow and get better. So if you guys wanna hear about the newest updates to XCS, let me know in the comments down below. But for this video, we are going to be installing Lightburn. So once your firmware is updated, you can close out of this. Next, we go back to Xtool's website. We are going to go to support and we're gonna go down to 4D1 Pro. That will take us to this page scroll down, find this quick start guide for use Lightburn to operate Xtool D1 Pro. Click on that, and this is gonna walk you through everything right here. First thing we're gonna do is download Lightburn. Click on this, you will pick your version here and download your version of Lightburn for your computer. This is a fully functional 30 day trial. Once you decide to buy Lightburn because it's absolutely worth it and you go to the online store, I get this question a lot. Which licensed software do you buy? You are gonna buy the G-Code license key. Your laser runs on G-Code. You're gonna want this one. Now I'm gonna close this because I already have Lightburn installed. I'm gonna open up Lightburn and while that's loading, we're gonna go back to Xtool's website. We've completed the first part of step one. The next thing you wanna do is download this file right here. A lot of people skip over the step. 
this is very important to download. So we're gonna download that. Once it's downloaded, I'm just gonna pull it over and save it to my desktop so I know where it is. And then we can close out of there and we're gonna come over to Lightburn. We'll go over these panels in just a second, but what I want you to do right now is go to devices. Let me remove this because I already have it on there. You're going to go to import. You're gonna find that file that you just downloaded. You're gonna open it and it's gonna install the Xtool D1 Pro parameters in Lightburn. Okay, so I don't know if you noticed, but it did change the size of my laser bed here. So a little bit on the landscape of Lightburn. Anything inside this square is considered your laser bed. Now, Lightburn can be a little intimidating for people in the beginning. So what I suggest doing is coming up here to the gears, clicking on those and slipping this over into beginner mode. What you'll notice is a lot of these uh, advanced icons will disappear. It's just a little bit more helpful when you're first learning the software. You're definitely gonna wanna turn that off later because you're gonna have access to the rest of those. For this tutorial, turn them off. It's just gonna make your life easier. Now let's talk about this panel right here. Your first tab is cuts and layers. So if I come over here and I decide that I wanna draw a square, it's gonna put that on a layer, okay? These layers correspond to the layers down at the bottom of the screen. And this is in line mode. We use line mode when we want the laser to cut. So to give you an idea, if I click out of here, you're gonna see this solid line. If I double click this, that layer is set up to cut at a speed of 10 millimeters per second, and the max power is 100%. One pass, don't worry about this stuff yet. Now, if I also wanna draw a circle, I can do that. And if I wanna put it on a different layer, I come down here, I'm gonna hit seven, just because, so you can see it. And that layer is on a fill mode. So what it, the laser's gonna do is it's gonna engrave all of this space. So if this, so if this was inside here, let me make it smaller so it fits. So if I ran this right now, if I hit start, it would cut this line. So it cut the square and then it would fill in this entire circle. Okay, we're gonna come back to this in just a second. Your move panel here allows you to move the laser via the software. So if I click that, it's gonna move 50 millimeters to the right, 50 millimeters down, and you get the idea. Don't worry about homing your machine right now. We're not gonna do that. Console, this is where your G code's gonna run. You don't really need to worry about this unless you're throwing an error for some reason, and then you may wanna come in here just to look at the number to look up the error. Camera controls if you have a camera. We do not have a camera set up, and don't worry about variable text for the time being. Okay, now let's get our laser set up. Real quick, before we get our laser lined up with where we want our start to be, we wanna make sure that it is focused. So. You're gonna pull it over the surface of your material. We're gonna kick the kickstand down, and then we're gonna adjust until we're touching our surface. Again, I'm using my extended Z axis. You guys would access this arm over here to release and move your laser up and down. Okay, so once we are focused, we're gonna manually place the laser where we want it to start. So right about there. Okay, so we're gonna hop back into light burn. I'm going to import an image. I'm just gonna use my logo and I'm just gonna make this a little smaller so it doesn't take so long to engrave. So we're gonna make that about 70 millimeters. And then next what I like to do is grab this and this is currently in image mode. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna right click and hit trace image, trace it. And then I'm gonna pull the original out and we're gonna leave this. Using fill mode, this is just gonna go a little faster. And then I'm gonna grab a circle I'm gonna make that over here. I'm gonna make that 75. And then I'm gonna put that on another path, right? So I'm gonna put it on that path. We're gonna grab the circle, bring it over here, and it should snap to the center. Okay. So now we have our cut and we have our engrave. What we wanna do now is set our engraving speed and power and our cut speed and power. First, we're gonna go ahead and select the pink, so we're gonna come up here, double click, and what we wanna do for the engrave is we wanna do about an 80 millimeters per second engrave at 50% power. Don't worry about these labels right here. You can change these whenever you want. There, there's some of them are preset in here already, and if you're a stickler, you can always change them when you go in here. You could put this as, you know, cut three millimeter walnut. All right, and for this, our speed is gonna be five millimeters per second, and we're gonna go max power. So we're gonna go 100% power. Okay, so now these guys are set up. 
should be good to go. Let's mosey on down to the laser screen here. Okay, so a couple of things. One, a lot of times this is set at absolute coordinates. We want to change it to current position because what it's going to do is it's going to start from wherever you manually put the laser head. Right here is the job origin. As you can see, I have the upper left-hand corner selected. That means that is where it's going to start. If I click off the, you see this green dot? That is where the laser is going to start from. You have pause, stop, and start. Start job is going to run the laser. Stop is going to completely shut down the job. Pause will stop the job, but you can still restart it. Just keep those in mind. But next what we want to do, and you should always do this just to make sure that your laser is where you want it, is to frame your piece. So click frame, and we're going to let it run. Everything looks good. So we're going to go ahead and hit start. All right, guys, and while we're letting the laser do its thing, I just wanna say thanks for sticking around till this point in the video. If you like these beginner type videos, let me know in the comments down below what you wanna see next and give me a thumbs up. Speaking of thumbs up, I always love to give an extra special thumbs up to all of my patrons. These guys are the ones that keep the lights on in the shop. If you want to join the Cupcake Army at large or laser nation if you will check out my patreon page linked below and the coveted two thumbs up goes to all of my top tier patrons or boilermaker patrons steven mann andy the viking todd stewart jason Ayers, reed means tina porter Derek Steele, voltage and frank the tank johnson frank went from a five dollar patron to a thirty dollar patron cheers my brother why is it so good? If you want to help support the channel, head on over to my Patreon page, check it out, and join up if that's your thing. If contributing monetarily is not your thing, check out my Discord channel links below as well. A lot of good conversations is happening over there. We're, uh, we're talking about lasers, kids. We're talking about lasers. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now, let's go check this thing out. Whoop! And there you have it, your first laser engraved and cut piece with your X-Tool D1 Pro. Now, if you want more lasery goodness like this right here, watch this video.